a very good morning to you. Happy Easter. The Lord is risen. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. I can't really talk about anything else this morning but the fact that the tomb was empty. The body was not there. Why do you seek the living here among the dead? He's not here. He is risen. The tomb was empty. The grave clothes laid aside. He wasn't like Lazarus, still wrapped up in his grave clothes and had to be freed. He was freed. He was alive. There is no tomb for Jesus for us to go and visit. Why would anyone want to visit a tomb that is empty? It's empty. He is. And, and we will come to this great chapter in 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, which talks about the resurrection, which is such a precious chapter to me, especially as I worked for many, have worked, so still work occasionally, for many years as a chaplain in a hospital dealing with uh, tragic circumstances and, and as a chaplain to a hospice. Um, the only reason I could do it is because I believe I'm absolutely 100% totally convinced that because he lives, we shall live also. The death of Jesus changed everything. The resurrection of Jesus broke out. He broke out of death and out of that tomb. Of course, they had to move the stone away, the angels, so that it could be seen that he wasn't there anymore. Um, and in chapter 15, which we will come to, but I've jumped to it today. In verse 3, chapter 15, verse 3 of 1 Corinthians, he says, For I delivered to you of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, that is Peter, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. Jesus was very busy after he rose from the dead. He appeared to lots and lots of people. We don't have a record of that amazing time when he appeared to 500 at one time. I don't know when that was. We don't have a record of it except that Paul obviously had been told about this experience. There was no holding Jesus once he had risen from the dead. But that lovely verse, uh, verses 3 and 4, describe the whole of Easter in a few words. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He fulfilled them all. Every, every last detail that was revealed over centuries, all those little details about the cross, Psalm 22, Isaiah 53, little snippets here and there, little hints, uh, the prophecy about being betrayed, the prophecy about the 30 pieces of silver, the prophecy about being buried in, in a rich man's tomb. Lots and lots of details all fulfilled on the first Good Friday, that he was buried, he was in the tomb, and then he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. You know, at first resurrection morning, we're so familiar with it, we can't recapture it, but what joy, what joy for all of us doesn't matter what happens in this world, essentially, compared to what Jesus did. Jesus has conquered it all. Jesus has conquered death. Jesus became the first fruits from the dead. He, he became the first of a brand new order of those who would have a resurrection body for eternity. He changed everything by his death and resurrection. This weekend is the fundamental weekend of the world. Everything hinges round this weekend. He is risen. He is risen. And I marvel again, as I always do, every time I think about the resurrection appearances, that in his 
ultimate respect for autonomy. He did not appear to anyone who wasn't already a follower. He didn't go to Caesar. He didn't go to Pilate. He didn't go to Ananias and Caiaphas. He didn't go to the Sanhedrin. He didn't go to the Pharisees or the Sadducees. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't go to anyone to force them to believe in him. He respects our autonomy so much, but he loves us so much that his greatest desire is that even those who know him but have doubts should come through to full acceptance that he's alive. So those who'd been following him, who found it difficult to believe, he, he went to them. Thomas, of course, we'll be looking at Thomas, won't we? Uh, the story of Thomas covers two weeks. Um, the guys who, or the two, possibly a man and a woman, walking to Emmaus, um, talking about all the events, but still not really believing it could possibly have happened. Jesus went to them to bring them through to full faith. But he did not go to anyone who did not have some, some, something going on in their heart. And so today we rejoice. We celebrate today, Easter. If you've got Easter eggs, you're, you're allowed to eat them today. <laughs> Unless you've been like me and had a few already, a, a few chocolates already in celebration of this weekend. It's Easter. It's Easter. Happy Easter. The Lord is risen. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah.